Hello and welcome back to our channel. Now we are back at the extension project that we started in Mogai. In the last video we did the footings, the foundation and the substructure. Now this is our first official day as the joiners, carpenters on site because even though we've been here as the main contractors, it's now our time to do our wall play, our timber kit, our roof construction and kind of take over from here on out. And then the bricklayers will come back and they'll do their superstructure at a later date. So today's all about getting set up because even though we've been here, we've not really been fully here full time. We have been doing other jobs. So we're going to get this garage cleaned out behind me. Just needs a good sweep out. We're going to get the site pretty much just tidied up in the way we want it. We've got all our site equipment in the back of the van that we're going to get out. And we're also going to start by getting our wall plate down and I'm going to explain this video how we're going to do that making sure that the building is perfectly square and getting it dead on straight and if we get time at the end of the day we're going to take a wee look at this roof and decide our heights for our timber kit which we're going to be doing tomorrow so i'm really buzzing that we're a week ahead of schedule because of the sun this usually doesn't happen in scotland usually we get rained off at this time of year it's early spring but we've been blessed we've not had good weather like this since covid but anyway skip. Will this get a wee screw bit? So this is just like a track saw? It's, a, it's just a basically, it's basically like a, like the track saw and the rear handle saw had a baby. Is the best way to explain this, so. Why aren't you using your rear handle saw? Because I'm going to try this for the first time, see if I like it. But the only thing is, with the rear handle saw, the blade's on this side, and this blade's on this side, so it's a bit different. Mm -hmm. Just double checking and triple checking my sizes because even though the bricklayers have done it, it's good that we double check. We measure off this wall to the point two, eight, four, zero. We just need a full length, like right to the really end. We might need to get a longer tape because this one will work. Right, you holding on 100? Yep. 8250. Right, sound 450. Sound. We're at the part of the job where we've cleaned up all the wall plate and we've cut all our timber to size and we've kind of sat it all out but we're going to be getting the building square. Now jodie has been asking me to explain this numerous times because she just doesn't get it. So if I can explain it to Jodie today, hopefully you lot at home watching this video will be understand. So Pythagoras for dummies. I get it. You wanted to work out the next size? Myself? Aye, go for right, it. Right, fine, I've got better hand right now anyway. Maths is a wonderful thing. <laughs> Welcome to Into Maths, where I'm going to teach you how to do Pythagoras, right? I've known how to do Pythagoras for years, right? Chris was just pretending to show me. This is our existing house where you would hope everything's square. This is our this is the extension that we've just built. So we need to make sure that the building the footprint that we've just built is square, right? What you would usually do is just measure your diagonal from here to here and here to here. If it was a square building, but it's not because of this wee jut out, right? So what we are going to do is we are going to break it down into this triangle and this triangle. Does that make sense? Like this here is a triangle. We've got our top size, which is 8250. We've got our side size, which is 3450. What we need to do is Pythagoras. A squared plus B squared, A squared, B squared, gives you 
x squared, which will be this diagonal size. a squared plus b squared equals x squared, right? So what we do is we do 8250 squared add 3450 squared will give you x squared, which is the diagonal size we need, right? a squared, which is 8250 squared, gives you 6802500, right? b squared, which is 3450 squared, gives you 11902500 and squaring something is just times in it by itself and you can do it on your, your phone so if you do that big number a squared plus that big number b squared it will give you 79965000 and that's the squared number so what you need to do is find the square root of that number which means you divide it by itself pretty much pretty much you can do it on your phone don't need it in your head and that gives you 8942 that's the size of x, that's the size of your diagonal. If that's the right, if that size is 8942, that means that that's a right angle and that's what you're wanting. So let's check it. Yay. Pythagoras! You holding that 100? Right, the number you need is 8942. 8942, perfect Jodie. Well done Joe. Right, that's the whole theory behind it that Jodie's just explained. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it even simpler for you. Take these simple numbers, 3, 4, and five. I don't know why, these are just magic numbers, so that if you have a triangle like this, and this side is three, this side is four, this side will always be five. So an easy way, if we go back to our shape of our house, you can measure three feet this way, four feet that way, and then that will give you your size. If that is five feet in between, will be perfectly square. That makes sense? I don't know why the numbers are just magic, but they are. <laughs> How's that? Hang on. You better not be lying to me, boy. Sorted? Sure. Yeah, right. I'm just temporarily fixing this in so that it's in place so I can string it all. Because um, if you look along, it's obviously not straight. But I know Stephen's coming along and packing it. So, this was the higher point anyway, that side was the. Whoa, look at the size of that! Whoa! Do you want to get it's going so slow! It's huge, man. We've been on that. We went business class in this <laughs> We were on the upper deck. <laughs> Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Hey, one thing I want to point out, because we get a lot of questions about this and why we don't half lap our wall plate, and it's because we're putting a timber kit on top of it. So when we come to put our kit, imagine this is our kit panel, this will overlap like so. So that will come over, right over the wall plate and tie both together. It's a technique called binding, and we do the same with the top bit of timber around the top of the kit and it basically ties everything together. Right, now that we've got all the corners perfectly square, it's level all the way around, because Stephen went round and packed it all and used the digital level, all we need to do is string it to make sure that the walls are straight and then that's us done and we can chill and wait for our delivery which is coming this afternoon and then tomorrow we'll get stuck into the timber kit. So that goes around that way, oh, you hear that wee tune there? Means you know it's tight man. Right, wrap it around and that goes like that, and then we go to the other side, mate. You just put one at the back as the anchor. Oh. So I just pull it around the front of the timber, so it's like on this shoulder. Pull it tight, and grind the back one. And you can kind of use the back one to like pull it actual tight, do you know what I mean? By pulling this part and pulling your rear hand and then go nice and tight and then run the front. Just go run it twice and then walk down this way. And that's that done. Just lock it in there. Then all we need to do is fix all the timber to the string. It's dead easy. Hey, 
Right, that didn't take too long. Our wall plate is secured down, all square, straight lined, level, ready for our timber kit tomorrow. Um, all we're doing for the rest of the afternoon is we're going to go for lunches now and then we're going to wait for our delivery and offload all of that. Just a point to note, these concrete screws are not the correct fixings for fixing down the wall plate. Well, they are and they aren't. We're just temporarily fixing them down. They'll be solid with them for the time being. And then when our kit panel's on top, we'll put a big 150 uh, Hilti bolt M10 straight through both of them and that will secure it right down to the wall plate and also we'll have uh, tie down straps which we'll see when we do the timber kit which will connect the outside skin brick to the timber kit. It will all start to make sense as this job progresses but for now I'm hungry, it's lunch time. This afternoon as we wait on the delivery we're going to do some investigation work so this is a typical roof layout drawn and this has been done by the structural engineer and the architect and why that is important just now is because we need to find the heights that we're going to set our timber kits to when they arrive and for building them tomorrow. Now, what the architects and structural engineer wants is a bearing bits of timber going along the wall here at the existing house and then we'd basically run our 8x2 timbers into here with joist hangers and it would all be secure. Now that's going to be absolutely fine at this part of the house because we've got the height here but at this part of the house where the French doors are the building wall at the front is actually a lot smaller so we'll not get our ceiling height that we need we're looking for about 2.4 2 meters for the ceiling height so what i phoned the architect and explained this to him and what we've decided to do is try and find the wall plate on top of this wall and we'll run these joists in and sitting on top of the wall plate above the patio doors and here we'll still get a bearer on the wall where we can have bolted to the wall joist hangers etc let's see the model tool and we'll cut this open so long <laughs> Come on! Oh, that nail's taking a piss out of me. Go for here. There you go, mate. Cause there's a wall plate there. With the joist is sitting on. That's on that's uneven, that's no level. See that? That's got two different ones. I think we open it up now and have a look. Oh, there's steel. Aha. Uh -huh. So there's steel here. Which they could potentially sit on the joist. What I think we do is we phone the architect because I'd be happy for the joist to sit on that. That steel will run right along. So I phoned the architect and this is the solution that he has come up with. So this is the wall head, probably at the highest point. Stephen over that side is just double checking above the patio door that we're going to check that this is the same height as it. How we're going to do it is we're going to hold the level on here. It's a digital level, so we're going to get it perfectly level. And then what we'll do is we'll drop our tape down, obviously minus in the 45. Digital level, it's going to be up, 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 down, down, down. Height is going to be about 2 or 3, minus the 45, and that's going to be the height of our kit. So we're going to build a wall the same height as this wall head over there and that's going to tie in with this and this will be completely level when we put our new joist in and then our new joist will sit like that carry all the way along i hope that explains it we've got the steel here obviously there's a wee bit of 2x1 underneath this rafter so we'll just need to pack this bit of timber up to suit to take the new joist so that they're all level but we'll do that as we work along what we'll do is we'll probably start for this side of the property build the wall that back bit and come all the way around but we're basically taking the height and tying the height in with this so our timber kit is going to be the same height as this bit of wood here. Aye. Cool. Good news is our delivery is finally here which means we've got all the materials for building a timber kit 
And while this delivery's been offloaded, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about MGM Timber. MGM Timber was the first timber merchant that I used back in 2019 when I was just starting out as an apprentice. They helped me throughout my apprenticeship, teaching me about materials, always keeping me right and guiding me in the right direction. They've always been very welcoming, providing service with a smile, with some great banter and always going the extra mile. MGM supplied the materials for all of our projects over the past few years, including the Stables Project, the Mogai Roof Project and the Bishop Briggs Double Story Extension. MGM are a Scottish-based company with 15 branches throughout the country, sourcing and milling their timber in Glenroth. I've had many offers over the years to work with other timber merchants and buy my materials from them, but I've always stayed loyal to MGM for the reasons that I've already mentioned. Thanks to MGM Timber for supporting me and many other Scottish businesses alike and thank you for sponsoring this video. End of day one of us officially being on site as the carpenters, the joiners, whatever you want to call it and I'm very happy with the progress even though it doesn't look like we've done much I'm extremely happy with the progress because tomorrow it means this place is going to be looking a whole lot different. We're going to have all of the walls up. We're going to have the back wall, the side wall, all the windows done, done and dusted and I can't wait. Unfortunately, this is going to be the end of this video, so I'll see you in the next one where we're going to be doing the timber kit. So make sure you stick around and watch that video because that one is going to be a belter.